I get asked all the time, I'm going to my first postcard show, what should I expect? Do you have any advice? Stay tuned, I'll tell you everything you need to know. Chances are, if you're going to your first postcard show and you've asked me this question, you've already figured out where the postcard shows are. But if you haven't figured out where they are, there's a, uh, several websites out there that you can check and find out when the next upcoming postcard shows are. First one, and I'll link these in the description below, postcardhistory.net. They have a section shows and events and you can see you know, this weekend Dansville or Dalesville Virginia the Roanoke um, Virginia postcard show two-day event and you can just plan out an event uh, in advance where to go uh, the postcard history it only goes up to you know several months out this one it ends in June uh, for those who want to plan out a little more uh, everybody knows Daniel over at Mel Zeum and he put together a really uh, comprehensive list of all the postcard shows and you can filter by state and date but his go I believe his go out for the whole year and there's also bars postcard news and ephemera bars used to just have a uh, I think it was a monthly postcard news publication and that has since dwindled away and there's this just on line now but you can see they also have the same information and looks like they go out uh, at least down to September so now you know where to go so uh, this is a video from the 2021 York Pennsylvania postcard show uh, I went there and I went live from the show and it was shown on uh, Matt Jackass Retro's channel so everybody knows Matt go check out his channel he does a daily packing show but this is my video from that show if you had to pick any postcard show and you're within say a four hour uh, circle radius from York Pennsylvania this would probably be the one you need to go to and what a what a whopper of a postcard show uh, to pick as your first uh, card show um, most postcard shows aren't going to be this big I think this was the largest one in the United States possibly the world um, I know there's a couple in England that may, uh, I think the Festival of Cards that may rival this. But in the United States, this is the biggest. Uh, I'm going to have this loop, so we may see this a couple times. just depends on how long I, I talk through this. So uh, maybe uh, a more localized show like that one in Roanoke. Maybe they only have um, 15 dealers. This place had 75. Uh, even if it is a, a smaller show... Like the Have a Degrace show that I used to vend at, um, 10 to 12 dealers, maybe 20. You're still looking at uh, half a million cards at the minimum and up to millions. Uh, 75 vendors, if you have most vendors that have, you know, 50 boxes, they're going to have 20,000 cards, one single vendor. And you times that by... Uh, you know, 75, some dealers are going to have, you know, 50, 60, 70, maybe 100,000 cards on their table. What I'm saying is, you're going to be overwhelmed. You are not going to see every single card in that show. So why are you going? Are you going to cherry pick other dealers for resale purposes? And honestly, that's what I do. I think everybody knows that I do that. I don't know if everybody likes that I do that, um, but if you're going to resell, there's some specifics you need to be aware of. If you're going as a collector, there's some also uh, some specifics. If you're going as a reseller, um, I would concentrate on, this is me, my advice, concentrate on the quarter to dollar boxes. Um, if you're or, or take your bolo list and hit those dealers and like Disney. I always look Disney you know, and some other topics that we'll talk about here in a second. But you go in, uh, you find a dealer, sit down and have your 
you know, have an idea of what you're looking for. Uh, for me, I sit down on a dollar box. I'm just going through as fast as I can, picking out cards that, you know, the, the Bolo uh, memory bank. So that first day, uh, I'm going around, like I said, to the uh, quarter boxes, the dollar boxes, and I'm concentrating on, um, you know, finding good cards to resell. And usually that second day is when I have my specific topic uh, lot. I'll go to the Disney, I'll go to Pretty Ladies, I'll go to um, Ships. I'll go get those specific talk topics or places from my bolo list and I'll search those out on that second day. The reason I do it the second day is maybe those dealers are maybe a little bit more inclined to make a deal. And they're usually those specific topics, they've curated out, they have them in their categories, and those are usually priced a little bit higher. Um, and also maybe on that second day, that's where I'm going to those more expensive cards. Also the, you know, the $5 real photo box, that $10 real photo box. And again, that second day, maybe those dealers are a little bit more inclined to take a little bit more off that, uh, that final value and, uh, maybe get a good deal. So that's what I, that's how I handle the shows. Just relying on my knowledge, 26 years of picking through postcards and selling postcards on eBay and what pretty much I know sells. Um, anymore, I'm looking more towards not really specific towns, but views within any town and, um, topics, you know, pretty women, all that stuff. You can join my, uh, membership channel and I go over my bolo list. I share that secret with my membership. So something you may want to keep a, keep a, an eye on or uh, keep in mind, but anyway, postcard shows. Um, if you're a root, if you're just a true collector, um, you're going to have your list of what you want and you can probably quit. You could probably hit all these dealers and just say, Hey, do you have Disney? And, um, they'll point you in the right direction to the Disney box or tell you, no, I don't have Disney and you can move on. When you approach a table, most dealers are going to say, Hey, what are you looking for? Uh, very friendly dealers and you can, uh, Pretty much ask them any want you want, and they'll tell you if they have it or not. And most dealers know, you know, what they have. So uh, very friendly, talk to them, and they'll lead you in the right direction. Or, you know, just sit to, uh, what I always say is, that, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm just kind of looking, see what catches my eye. And a lot of people are like that. Um, so, but yeah, if you're a true collector and you like Disney, go around. You could probably hit all those dealers and find out you know if you have if that's what you're looking for if they have it fine buy it you can move on for the reseller and that's really for collectors um all the other advice will uh apply i guess also so uh if you're going so if you're a reseller i probably wouldn't go up to them and say hey i'm a reseller i want to cherry pick your cards and sell them for more money um, you can always maybe, uh, say, Hey, I'm looking for, uh, bulk postcards. Uh, uh, do you have anything like that? Yeah, pretty much tell them you're a reseller. Um, and they may be very willing to, uh, sell you bulk. The vast majority of these dealers don't sell on eBay. Uh, and they don't know current, uh, market price. And, you know, as a reseller, you can probably use that as, uh, to your advantage, but I wouldn't really announce that fact to these dealers. So, again, what, not even again, what do you take? Um, cash. Because er, almost every postcard show you're going to go to is going to have some type of entrance fee. Uh, I've yet to been to be, uh, I've yet to go to one that has like a card swipe to pay. Who knows? Maybe in the future they'll go to something like that. But right now it's cash, five, ten bucks. York I think is ten bucks for two days. So take cash. And the dealers. Um, very rarely have I seen a dealer have a swipey card um, to to take cash or to take uh, credit card payments. Uh, so take cash and obviously take only as much cash as you 
are willing to uh, spend cost of goods sold business expense um, and also with cash you know you have say if you go to a dollar table and you have a hundred one dollar cards hey uh, ask the dealers and I guess it's for collectors too if you you can ask for a discount some will have it automatically posted some uh, you have to ask and I would ask no harm in asking some will be like no I'm firm okay no worries some may give you a 20 25 percent discount but if you have cash you know much easier to to do that some have taken uh, personal checks and I've only done that uh, one time and uh, just because it was such a, a large order so take cash use your credit card probably maybe at the uh, food truck or the the food place um, as m some some places do have that so that kind of leads me to the second thing you need to take take food and water uh, if you go if you're serious you're gonna be there all day some of these places open at 8 9 and 10 o'clock and go to six summer two-day events um, you need to obviously stay hydrated and I always put like power bars or something like that in my backpack I take a backpack um, and just nosh on that as you're eating it, it's a job you're there to make money work hard at it um, so take that take a pencil I, I should have brought a pencil or a, a, a marker and why you want to do that if you're sitting in at one of these tables these I wouldn't mark up definitely don't mark these type of ones up that you see on the screen but for the quarter boxes the dollar boxes uh, ask the vendors hey can can I mark this box because if you're sitting at a table and there's 40 boxes and you're sitting all day you don't want to be going through the exact same box that you just went through you know an hour ago so you probably can't see it on here and I'm not gonna do it on the screen but up oh, make a bigger screen but you can see some of them already put their initials and then up in that top corner more initials and I've seen them put them along the top up here too but ask I had one vendor is like hey can I mark your box he's like I don't use ink because he likes to keep his boxes clean and he'll go in a race you know that may suck if you see him next year but uh, for this show marking in pencil probably not a bad idea you know put your initials put some squiggly mark that you is uh, recognizable to you I've seen people use those little miniature like ink stampers like a, of a purple star but no matter what you use ask the vendor hey can I mark the box quarter boxes no, probably won't be a problem really nice sorted curated card there they're, they're not going to want you to mark their boxes uh, take finger goo this stuff the pink stuff these cards 100 120 years old you're going to be flipping through a thousand of them well, me I'm a finger licker used to be any I'm a reformed finger licker you're licking 100 year old 200 year old postcard goo that maybe a hundred other people have handled over the years um, so I use this no one's ever said a thing I you know I actually I keep it in my pocket and I just do a quick swipe and rub it in and that makes my fingers tacky you can also use these little finger condoms that's what I call them uh, put them on your thumb and it'll give you some you know some tack and you know you can flip through I don't like wearing the condoms on my finger uh, very uncomfortable I know so I, I prefer finger goo take that take a magnifying glass I like these little pocket ones has a nice light 30 60 90 uh, magnifying glass keep that in your pocket because you're going to come across a real photo and you want to make sure it's a real photo or a litho and there's enough videos out there about telling the two apart but take that take a business card you may run into that vendor or overhear a vendor say yeah I'm looking to get out of the postcard industry whatever give them your business card with your contact information and you may get uh, a nice lead out of that take a container I 
throw one of these in my backpack. It says a little Sterilite flip top. Um, you can take a bigger one if you have a bigger bag, but I like to take this because um, what you're buying, you're obviously buying something to resell. You don't want to get it damaged. Uh, most dealers will give you, you know, a little plastic bag, a little envelope or a paper bag. I, you know, you don't want to throw those into your backpack with your bottles of soda or whatever and have it everything, you know, get dinged and damaged. So buy, you know, just get one of these little containers, throw your purchase cards in there so they stay nice and secure. Uh, take a battery pack for your self, cell phone. Um, you can see some of those center tables. You're not going to be anywhere close to an outlet. So take one of those battery chargers, keep that in your backpack or your purse, and that way you can keep going. And, uh, you know, you don't have to go go out to that vehicle and charge your, charge your uh, phone and miss some of the uh, show. Um, what I take is uh, for the large letter greetings, if you have that large letter greeting book, they have the list of like the top 50 most expensive and rare large letter greeting cards. Um, I keep, I took a picture of, of them and I put them on my phone. So if I'm going through the large letter box and I find one, I say, man, is that a good one or not? You know, I, I pick that up and I'm, and I look at that. I also have my bolo list on here. Again, I don't refer to it as much as I used to. Um, but it's there. It's on my phone as an image, and I can uh, search it. Postcard shows everybody has been super friendly. Um, there's some etiquette that you need to know about. If you're sitting, um, looking through a box, or if you say you come up to a table and there's someone, I don't know, they're looking at the dis, they're si they're seated, they're looking through the Disney box. You're interested in Disney. Don't reach into a box that someone is currently looking through. Don't do it. That is that is one of my biggest pet peeves, and I'm an easygoing person. If I'm looking through a box and someone reaches into that box, that pisses me off. Don't be that person. Uh, if you just can't wait, ask. Hey, uh, can I see that box when you're done? Um, are you done? Maybe they're already done with the first part of the box. And they're working on the back. He's like, hey, uh, do you mind if I look in the front? It's still maybe a little bit rude, but it's a lot better than just reaching in and taking over. Um, I always ask, even if this person is, they're looking through a box and there's a box beside them. I will ask, hey, uh, are you going to that box next? And they'd be like, no, I just finished with that one. Have at it. Um, so just be courteous to the other people around you. I mean, you don't have to talk to anybody, but I've picked up some great information listening to the dealers talk to other people, listening to, you know, the customers talking, hey, I collect this. And I just, I just put that in the back of my mind as like, hey, maybe that's something I need to keep an eye out for. So yeah, I always pick up a lot of information you know, you know, someone talking about, you know, uh, clap saddles that are rare, um, or, uh, last show I heard that the person who wrote that large letter book found a large letter greetings card that they didn't know about at the show. So I went and asked them, you know, Hey, what one was it? You know, I can't remember what it was, but you learn a little bit of information. And if you don't, if you don't want to participate in that, if you don't want to eavesdrop on other people's conversation, you know what? Take your earbuds, listen to music, tune everybody out, and get into the zone. Fine, no, no worries. But uh, you know, I'm always, I'm always talking to people, always learning something. It seems like I, I know, you know, half the dealers. I end up talking to them. Uh, you've probably seen this video several times. You know, I talked to one, one of the dealers, and there's a gentleman who runs. Uh, the postal history, postcard history website, and I usually end up talking to people, you know, for a couple hours. Um, but uh, yeah, just go have a seat, have fun, be overwhelmed, um, and you'll get addicted to going to postcard shows. And uh, it's a great thing to be involved in. And um, let me know in the comments below if you have any tips 
uh, for going to a postcard show. Help the new people out. We need, we got to get new people into this hobby, and so they're not intimidated, and that this hobby can um, continue. We definitely need a lot of youngins coming into the hobby. As you can see, there aren't too many uh, 20-somethings at this show. It's definitely an older person's uh, game, hobby, whatever you want to call it, and we need to bring more people in. Even if they're buyers to resell, you know, I personally don't think that's big of a, uh, that is that big of an issue uh, because people are here, people are buying cards, and that's perpetuates the hobby. So again, if you have any tips for anybody else, go ahead and leave them in the comments below, and I hope to see you at a postcard show soon. Thank you.